Hey, Sandra here, and today I want to explore what I call app hopping. Now you may be wondering what on earth that is, but you will shortly find out. Are you an app hopper or do you stick to just one app at a time? I have got Procreate open and I've just got a plain background. And for example, I want to create a brush. Now, in order to create a brush in Procreate, you need a square canvas. If you have an oblong canvas, it will completely and utterly skew whatever you put on it when you make it into a brush. You need a square canvas. So to make a new brush, I can go to the brush tool here and I choose which group of paints, brush paints that I want to add to and just click on add. And then I have to insert an image and the only way you can insert an image to this is to insert a photo. Now you can import actual brushes already by using the import tab up there, but to make your own you need to insert a photograph or an image that you have saved to photos. This is the image that I've imported and this is the grain source. Now at the moment, if I was to pen on here, yeah, nothing happens. And it's because it hasn't actually allocated a grain to it, which means it doesn't have anything to use. So I want to have a grain applied to it. I can swap from the pro library, which is what I'll do, or again, I could insert a photo. Now the grain is basically the texture and I just want a plain texture to it. I don't want to add any extra texture to this. So I go to swap from the library, scroll until I hit the plain one, which is this one here, tap on that. And you're thinking to yourself, well, that's a weird looking brush. And yes, it is at the moment. So if I go into the general tab, I can use a stamp preview. Now this will show me the image that is going to make my brush. And as you can see at the moment, that's square with the design inside it and that's not what I'm after. What I need to do is to invert the shape. Tap or stroke on here, you'll see what I'm going to get. If I go back to the stroke and I increase the spacing, then I will get a different result again. So go there and you can see each individual flower quite clearly. So that has enabled me to make a brush. There are lots of different things that you can do with the brush to alter its appearance and I'm not going through those. Just play with them and see what you like the results of. That's the easiest way of finding out what they do, to be quite honest. So if I now go and make this quite large and tap on there, I get my design. So if I want to use it in Procreate, all very well and good, not a problem. But what if I decide I want to use that brush in concepts, for example? Can I transfer it? Well, Procreate brushes are not the same as concepts brushes, so I couldn't just import the whole brush. What I can do, however, is to import the design itself. So I can do that. Now, in order to do this quite nice and easily, you want two apps open at the same time. You want Procreate's open and you want the Concepts app open. So in order to do that, I just do a quick flick from the bottom. This black line comes up and then I pull that up and I get my menu. There's Concepts, drag it, hold it, and move it over to the side until you see a gap and lo and behold I've got both apps open. So how do I get that from there to and there? And it's relatively simple. Go up to the icon which is a wrench, copy it. I want to slide that over a bit so I can see concepts better. There we go. And if you Take that from the pasteboard, you will get whatever image you had there. So it's copied it to the pasteboard and you've just pasted it. In Concepts, you can just drag it in and then it's pasted. 
So I have that as a pasted image. How do I make that into a brush in Concepts? Now Concepts didn't used to have brushes that you could make yourself, but it does now. And so what I'm going to do is tap on part of the tool wheel here. So I'm just going to tap on that one, bring up my menu. So I have the brushes menu and I can either go down here and for example, I can click on Untitled and Edit Untitled. Or I could have gone to the plus sign, which was over here. So in order to get my stamp source, click on here and go to the clipboard. And I've got the same design on there. So now I could select a grain. I'm not going to do that. I can adjust the size, I can make it a lot bigger. I can give it size variance. And the way you do that with these, you just take your pen on here and you can just you know, alter it to whatever you fancy altering it. Opacity I'm going to leave alone, smooth this I'll leave alone. The shape spacing, there you are, you can see what that's doing. And you've got two of these controllers, so you can mess around to your heart's content there and just do what you want to do and the shape scatter just makes it so that it's not in a straight line and then you have rotation and you can rotate your design again you can play around with that until you get exactly the result that you want so now if i change the color to another color just so you can see what's going on and I tap on here, there we are, I have my brush stroke. If I make them much closer together, then obviously they will become a stroke. If I keep them further apart and separated, then they just end up being individual items. Why would you want to do that? Very, very simple. If you are making stamps, great way of getting your images down. If you are making stencils, excellent for that. Now, two really big differences, or a big difference, I should say, between Procreate and Concepts. Concepts is vector-based. Now, you can export this as a JPEG, a PNG, uh, I think it's got the Adobe, I think it's got the Adobe um, export on it. You can export it as SVG or whatever, but if you export these as SVG, all you're going to get is the line in the center of this. You won't actually get the thick lines, the thin lines and whatever. So you export it as a PNG and then you can just trace it in your cutter software if that's what you need to do. And it's not a problem, you end up with a decent cut file. So that's how you do it there. And you'll notice that I was able to make a brush from the clipboard. Now a difference with Procreate is that there is no clipboard option on here to import from the clipboard to make the brush. It's not there. So whereas I can take that, I can copy, paste the clipboard in Concepts, I can also go to Concepts and paste into here, but I then have to save the image in my photos in order to be able to import it to make a brush from it. That's the main difference. Now, I love both apps and they each have their strong points. They work slightly differently. They each have features that the other does not have. As I said, this is not a vector based app. The beauty of doing brushes in here is if I want to make a design that requires masking because Concepts does not have masks. Okay, so what I can do here is bring up the file layer menu and I can add another layer and I can tap on that, bring up the menu and it says clipping mask down here. So I add a clipping mask. Now if I change my paint colour, for example, to a yellow, Go to my brushes, pick a different brush. I'll just go for luminescence. 
and I'm going to pick glimmer lights. Okay. So if I now use this over here, ooh, metallic effect, fun. But it will only color the bits that I have painted. It will not color any of the background. If you look at this, I can have all these marks over everywhere, but it's not going to show, it's just going to go into that area there. And that's a really useful one. So Procreate House Mask concept does not. So as you can see, I am definitely an app hopper. And I do like to hop between the apps to do whatever I want to do. Now you don't have to make it to drawing apps side by side. You can always use this side by side apps for doing things like getting images from the internet and something else you may want to do is to have a document open that you want to put your images in so you can copy and paste into other documents. So having two apps running at the same time can be really, really handy. It's just about feasible with the 11 inch iPad Pro. I think it would be much better with the larger iPad Pro, but I don't have that one. Um, so yes, app hopping is a very valuable thing to do if you want to maximize your design or your drawing potential. So if you have an iPad Pro, give it a go and see what you think. I will put some more suggested videos up here and I hope to see you again soon.